upper low, let's look at this piece and how to play it. Yeah, this opening, um, I'm gonna do some crazy sounds, by the way, just to test how this YouTube algorithm works, so don't be surprised. But, um, yeah, I'm wondering how, you know, this piece works, because it's really, really amazing, and it's so exciting, and I mean, it's got all these staccato dots. Yeah, that kind of stuff, just ignore it once in a while. Um, see how this algorithm flags this video. Um, so, there are a couple of different ways to finger it, and I'm gonna start with a blank slate, just to see it. All, what all the options are. In the left hand, right, that's a pretty straightforward 1-5 octave, you just keep jumping down. So one of the things I keep trying to emphasize is always, always practice jumps as you play, because there's this common um, habit that some people have, some students that I have do this. Um, they, they play the note, and they know they're supposed to play here, but they, they keep their hands stuck. So it's like really, really wrong, you know, you shouldn't do that. Um, so you, really what you should do is that. So there's this jump play as opposed to just play method of uh, piano approach. So that's wrong, that's right. So practice this. So you kind of instantly uh, teach your twitch in the left hand. In the right hand, a little trick here. Uh, same chord cascading down with some offbeat syncopated rhythms. The most logical or the most straightforward fingering approach is to do one, three, five, and then you have three here. Next chord will be one, two, five. In fact, to really follow this logic through, you should start one, two, five, jump to this, where you exchange two for three. On the same note and then you do this but of course instantly you have to do this so just like when you did the octaves right you just like uh, you know it kept jumping down all right i'm sorry about this just having fun with youtube um so yeah the same idea here you start with a chord and you really want to practice that instant position switch but for this first chord i would just go with one three five and the only thing you would have to jump would be the outside finger. So from uh, C and A, 1-5, to B and G, 1-5. So like this. All right, let's finger it. One goes here, three goes here, uh, five goes here. And then instant switch to this. And my instant switches I'll mark with some kind of squiggly line like this. Uh, well, actually, no, let's let's do, do what I like to do myself in my scores, which is, where are you? There you are. There. So the idea here is you play this A minor first inversion chord and then instantly jump like this. Right, so small jump, but a jump. Not that. That's wrong. Right, same thing happens there, of course, and then finally uh, right here. So, it works pretty well until that final G sharp because you're inside the keys, so you suddenly have to do this like zigzag or you know, L-shaped move, move from the edges of the white keys to inside the white keys. Pretty important to master if you want to do it well. You know, that's where it happens. And I'll, I'll circle this or highlight it like this. All right, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, is there some alternative that can make this weird l shape move a bit easier in context? Well, one alternative is you stay inside, right? You play like this. That way your thumb moves gradually towards G sharp and you don't have to do the crazy L shape. But you really have to go over those black key humps. The humps, right? Broom, 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 broom. Um, so that's not so comfortable. Maybe that sudden shift inside the keyboard is the only way to do it. But then I thought, well, what about this 
other alternative, which is it's pretty easy to put the second finger on G sharp. And then you would put maybe four on that C. And so if I have four and then two, three, five for my uh, first inversion triads, these three note chords, uh, maybe I can do four and then um, so like kind of unusual, a little tricky because four is a weak finger, but I just thought maybe I should point it out that that is an option. However, a little less traditional perhaps, and probably most people will choose this thing. Oh, sorry, I just realized I put two there for no reason. I apologize, let's do it properly. There it is. Three stays. So maybe as you near that red highlight, just practice the shift and stop. So in other words, on the red highlight, stopping point, fix that position. And, um, you know, your left hand should be here, right? So as long as you're like this at the red highlight, maybe extend it all the way down, you're good. Well, now, of course, all that backwards stuff that I love doing myself comes into play. I'm here, oh, sorry, like this, one, two, five in the right hand, right? I'm, I'm, imagine I just pressed down that uh, fourth beat chord. It's staccato, but I like, I press pause. And then I have to practice this. That move is very hard, but if you spend some time on it, it, it should become easier. Right, notice I'm not trying to play C and G sharp and all that stuff. Because so long as you're here, playing like this is trivial, right? It's getting there, that's always the problem. So that's why we practice. All right. Um, I should probably scream a little more just to excite the YouTube algorithm. Okay, my God, we got second measure to deal with. Oh, what do we do? All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, all right, here we go. Oh, my God, this is tricky. So big leap to here. And um, I don't know, I would probably use one and two like this or one and three. It doesn't really matter. As long as you know what you're doing, just jump in. But in the right hand, it's all the same stuff as in the first measure, except down an octave. So whatever fingers you use there, that's what you do here. But same thing, practice the jump right here. So I'll, I don't know, highlight it orange. All right, here we are. I'm on orange. I'm not playing anything. I'm just checking my position. Good. Now I'm pressing that chord on beat one. Here it is pause mode and just getting ready to do the jump again pause mode just thinking 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 and then boom ah i missed one more time thinking 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 and then boom all right so that's kind of the approach i would take here just identify your jumping points practice them make sure all the little jumps happen because of course here you know that's a jump that's a jump that's a jump right every little jump matters make sure you're doing it once you've mastered the jumps, should be more or less straightforward. Just might take a couple of days to of continuous work. So I'll I'll show this work right now pretty quickly and then move on to the next line. All right. So here is the trill. I'm on orange. Good. Practicing from holding that chord down and then moving. All right. Now I'm just going to play it staccato and then move. So the rapidity of the and precision of the jump is important. Of course, yes it is. All right. Then um, holding that C, last note of the first measure, and then there it is. I'm holding it. And now let's do staccato. And there it is. And then finally, right before the red highlight, um, uh, we have the chord like this, and we move, ooh, that's getting hard. So I'm adding more and more and more to do. At some point I'm going to collapse in a heap. Um, so, ah, so tricky. Why is it so hard? 
I mean, this part is not hard. Just doing the red thing is, is not hard. But doing the red and then all the way to the orange, pretty hard. So I'll start at orange one more time. Sometimes it helps to reset. So I'm here on orange. Before orange is this. Ah, there it is. And then C. Good. Getting better. And now before red. Okay, that felt better. Usually if you do this pattern twice in a row, the first time is pretty tricky. You're kind of figuring it out. Okay, one more, one more. And then, oh, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing. Let me just re repeat the steps. Easy. All right, not doing the third measure because it's all the same stuff down an octave. Um, and then uh, we get to here. That's a pretty tricky kind of drum-like beat, right? Drum-like rhythm. Almost like a quick tremolo. Then, let's push this aside like this. That's the beginning of the melody. A little stronger than the piano because you want to show that this is a voice, this is the important part. Everything else is just accompaniment or kind of rhythm section. So maybe a little more than piano and nice and clearly detached. Now it's not staccato, so you, do, you don't want to play you know, because you don't, you're don't, you not going to sing weird like that. But you, you, you can articulate each note separately. What, what are the fingerings? Um, I know I'm going to five on the next line. Right? So if you look here, there it is. Uh, but I have five notes here already. So my, my approach to these kinds of things is probably to do something like that. Or... Yeah, I would probably do 5-5, five, five. so that's, that's my approach, put 5 here, and then 5 would go here. And that tends to work pretty well. 4 is already on A, we'll need it there, right, so right here. So, uh, that, that takes care of, of things. But, what about the left hand, because I have to be on, on A, there is A, see that? So how do I finger this A? Probably... I don't really know. I Probably three, which means when I'm playing here, I want to put three already on A by this point. Well, I'm putting four there. I meant this. Right, so that kind of reminds me. Hey, you, you press that G. Three is already in place. Maybe even by the time you get to G. The sooner the better. The sooner you, you prepare ahead of time, the better. Really helps. Right, that, that's why I don't have to think. Oh, where is my A? It's right here. But then, let's get, get to the next line. Then we get to this next line and immediately you can see what the left hand is doing so i would suggest instant reset right so instead of staying here and oh i have to move just do this all the only thing you saw me do is slightly adjust my fifth finger it's it's not a big deal uh, not big deal at all. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. All right. Uh, so therefore, three here, and then instantly reposition to five. Again, instant preparation is the king. And not just five. I really want all the rest of them here as well. Keep pressing the wrong buttons, right? I'm here, and then I reset for all the other fingers to be in place. The only thing I'm going to end up moving is here, to be. To be or not to be? Um, I'm, I'm not even sure if YouTube algorithm will start putting this video amongst Shakespeare plays now because of this little quip. All right, so we got this, we got this, we set like this. Same thing here, you want to reset right away. Little things, but important things. 
right? It's staccato, you're not holding it, so you're going like this. Same thing right there. Right, so you're either playing in this orientation or in this orientation. Very similar positions, but a little bit of a stretch, a little bit less of a stretch. Okay, so that's left hand, which kind of repeats that this pattern comes back so much, we've already mastered like half of the left hand, I think. Maybe not. But in the right hand, it's, that's where all the business is to be had. We have five and going to a four. That's a side. Well, you won't forget you love me. Right, the kind of fa the falling intonation, slur, legato. I would not hold that A a long time. It's this convention in music. If you have two notes, two chords slurred, the last one is shorter. Now, okay, I'm not going to keep going into the third line yet, but that group is pretty clear. Make sure you're stretched out. Do not play like this. No, do not. Okay, this, good, yes. But when you get to that new harmony in the next measure, I'm not sure what the best fingerings are. I'm leaning myself towards this. Three, five. And then one, three, one, two, four. Five, four, five, and then reset back to basically the beginning of this line, right? There's a lot of repetition in this piece. So that's, that's my solution. Three goes here. Five goes here. And uh, one and three goes here. And then one, two, four goes here. Not three, two, four, one. So, so the only thing you really need to move is the thumb. All right, so I got it all mapped out. I know what to do. Question is how to teach myself to do it in real time. I don't know. No, I, I'm kidding. I know it just takes a bit of an effort. So backwards from here, let's mark it with violet. That's a big, big leap for the right hand, but a relatively small step for the man of kind of pianists. Pianist kind? Yeah, okay. Now, I don't know where this video will be recommended, but probably moon landing is fake videos. So, if I am on purple and I'm like this, yes, just like I am ready for, well, not quite the, the same way as I am getting ready for the first line in this, sorry, first measure in this line, because of course I'm playing that A with finger three, although, Come to think of it, let's back up a bit. I have so much time to reset my hand, to get up here. Let's get rid of all this. You know what? Let's just not bother with all this setting three in the right spot. Just do the same thing as before. Right? And then... But here... Let's just do that. Let's instantly jump into our new position like this. Perfect. We don't need to do that crazy three to five substitution. Everybody is happy. I'm a genius. I'm kidding. But I am. Just, just for this spot though. Just, just for this spot. All right. So we, we're here. The only thing we're adjusting is the fifth finger. And that way where I'm on purple, perfect. It's just the same exact thing as the first measure of this current line. Here we go. Yeah, so if I'm in this position, I can play all of this stuff just fine. Right. 
but going back I'm holding I'm gonna use some colors to help to show where I am here holding that stuff well, I guess I'm holding this as well right in the left hand I'm ready in the right hand oh no oh boy ah again Got these fingers stretched out, but I need to be ah, here. As long as I can nail this jump, I think I'll be fine. But what's getting in my way is me. I feel like I'm constantly hitting myself in the side. So I'm gonna do this, you see my nose? I'm gonna actually teach myself to be centered on kind of middle C area. And that way coming in here is so much easier. Yeah, my left hip is complaining a little bit right now. It's saying um, a little too much on me and uh, not so much on my twin brother or sister, uh, but um, so be it. I guess one thing, if you're practicing for a long time, you can do this. Just literally scoot over so your nose is in, the, in here and uh, then you can scoot back when you're ready. But uh, let's do this. Let's reset the torso the nose is on c i'm holding the blue thing and i'm doing that that's that's tough there it is so i'm here and i really want to be here again doesn't seem like it's a big jump but it has to be so uh, precise now I'm holding the let's go ahead and go to what cyan just one more note to add but now I have to do that little pinky move ah. it's doable just a lot of effort luckily here should not be too much effort to add this one two four And notice, I'm trying to keep my left hand pretty light because it's an accompaniment, it's staccato, but the voice, that kind of upper melody line, uh, which is important, I'm trying to really bring out a little more, linger on the notes a bit more. It's like true uh, detached playing, not staccato, not legato. And then reset. All right, so it's all about the purple. Keep stepping back, keep stepping back, you'll get it. Luckily, the following two measures are exactly the same, except the very end jumps differently. All right, we have to go to E, C. Strangely not connected. You, uh, you always tell me. Maybe because it's tell me it has to be more marked somehow. I really should put lyrics into this piece uh, that would help to study it okay so uh right instead of going down like we did on the purple let's have uh green kind of hard to see maybe but that's the different jump and also in the right hand I'm not even sure where i would go with the left hand but We'll figure it out, just so long as we know there is a jump of some kind. All right, let's go to that third line. 23, 24 minutes. No, it's so long. I'm sorry. It just takes a while to go through these things carefully, you know. But what can you do? Yeah, I would probably just go to the two. So that would be a two. Put it right here, put a reminder for two on A. I don't know, it, it's not so clear what that rectangle is about, but you'll figure it out. All right, just kind of puts all my fingers in the left hand ready for the next couple of measures until I have to do that right here. And of course, we're kind of referencing the very intro, the, the first measure in that third 
measure of this line. Okay, so this is hard. This is very hard. So first of all, make sure I'm in position. Yes, I am. In the right hand. Do you see that C that has to sustain? And I'll maybe use a um, purple highlight. That's not easy. So you have to do that one, two, one, two, light touch, staccato, while holding the C with the fourth finger. And then you have to reset. I don't know what the best fingerings are, but let's see what my gut feeling tells me. Somehow go inside. Another possibility. Right, actually go one, two to the black key. But that way you have to finger this group differently. I really don't know. All I know is this. this one thing I can tell you for sure is, is check this out. Position, uh, I was gonna say, position and a different position. Whatever fingers you use, cover all four notes at once. Right, reset, to whatever you reset to and make sure you're covering all notes at once. And of course, same thing here. Now, if you use two, one, three, five, you can already have two on E and four on A. That way you don't have to jump anywhere. That's kind of a nice thing, right? But you have to think about putting three on G sharp for that to happen. So that kind of, if, if I go with four on A, E, A, two, four, uh, I'm leaning towards two here. Two, three, so two, four, two, three. That's what we want to be aware of. Two, four, two, three, no, two, three. Sometimes I like tap the screen of my uh, iPad and it's not changing. Uh, so, and then two, four again. So I want to put four on G sharp, you know. Now that staccato means instant move. And here we go. Remember to follow the fingering patterns in the first measure of this piece. All the way up. Yeah, no, no, not what I wanted. There it is. Right, so make sure that's what you're using there. One, three, five, perhaps and then you're here. <sighs> I'm not going to go through my backwards practice approach that I use myself, but you know what to do. Find some spot where you're in position, you know, if you continue, you're set. Like for instance, I don't know, let's use another purple. If I'm here, Boom. I know I can play the rest of this measure if I've practiced the first measure, right? All of this stuff. But get into that purple highlight position thing. Uh, you gotta practice. I haven't done any craziness for a while for the poor YouTube algorithm. <laughs> okay, so now. There it is. I'm on, you know, where it says three there, and I'm trying to master this jump. Well, I actually should let go of my right hand, shouldn't I? Now the left, the right, the left hand jump, but the right hand does not jump. It jumps here. So every time there's a jump, the chances are your body will fight against your tendency to stay put. Or, I'm sorry, it'll fight against your knowledge that you should jump by staying put. That's what I'm trying to say. So, uh, you know, you fight back. So, like this. And then. 
right? I'm always making sure that whatever I'm moving through, I'm executing all those jumps that I've kind of boxed in, or maybe you're using an arrow or some other squiggle just to remind you to do it. That's really one thing that um, piano scores don't have. Motion transcribed inside the notes. If you know how to move, you know how to play it. If you don't know how to move it, hopefully you can do it intuitively, but chances are you have to practice. Okay, so all of this continues very similar to the beginning, except that instead of the, the trill that you see up upstairs, you have to do this. Oh, quiet. So different jump, but otherwise the same idea. Jump, check, same fingerings, and there, you, and there we have it. One thing I would recommend is treating these long notes in the style of classical era, detached more than legato uh, notation approach. So if you take it literally, you would hold the E all the way to the end of the measure. If you take it in the style of this piece, which is light, airy, lots of breathing room for, for notes, you want to stop right there. And it's also very advantageous because that's when you can practice the reset. Whoops, sorry about this. Reset to, what am I trying to do? This. Yeah, you're down here, it's an octave, E, and then you want to be here. Right, and this is, this is where you can look at that second line above that we just covered earlier. Oh, I just realized I, I started playing the fourth line and I didn't make it there. There it is. If you look at that left hand, basically exactly the same as, this, as the second line we just saw up here. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so that's nice. We don't have to practice we don't have to figure it out at all. Uh, in fact, the, the right hand is also the same. So we don't have to practice that either. That's, that's the nice thing about analyzing arrangements. Once you know that this, this is what I like to do. This is alpha, this is beta. And then here is alpha again. And what's coming up is probably going to be beta one, or you know, this is beta one up here. Boom, and this is alpha exactly, but then next coming up would be beta 2 or something like that. So, um, yeah, you can figure it out. I, I, I like to do one page at a time because it takes me forever to reset my iPad to show the second next page. But yeah, if you have any questions, uh, give, me, give me a shout in the comments. And uh, I need to do something crazy so that the YouTube algorithm uh, promotes these videos, right? So...